Hi, this is John Reynolds with Solomon Kellers and Brickform, and today I'm going to talk to you about our high performance coating line. We have two products that are water based our Deck Epoxy and our Euromax, they're both water based products, and our Polyastic is a solvent based product. You can see all products are two component products part A of each product, part B. Our Deck Epoxy is a two component water based epoxy. This product uh, is, is a two-to-one mix, two parts of our A and one part of our B get mixed together and then applied with a roller or a, an airless sprayer. Now if I go back to my board here, I can talk to you about the benefits of these products. Again, the deck epoxy is a water-based epoxy, two-component, two-to-one mix design. It's 190 gram VOC compliant. So in some states, we would have to be careful about the use where the regulation is 100 grams. It's a 35% solid sealer that's designed to be applied within 45 degrees to 90 degrees at a rate of 400 square feet per kit. The kit is a gallon and a half, so we're going to end up with uh, about 300 or so square feet per gallon. It's a high gloss finish when everything's said and done. The Euromax is also a water-based product. This is a, a water-based urethane. It's a three-to-one mix design. So we have three parts of our A and one part of our B. We have two kit sizes available. This is a small kit. This is a one-gallon kit that's going to cover anywhere from 350 to 600 square feet. And uh, it's rolled on very thin in, uh, and dries to a matte finish. So again, the Euromax is a water-based product, two-component, three-to-one mix design, 51% solids, less than 50 grams of volatile organic content, dries to a matte finish, cover at a rate of 350 to 600 square feet per gallon. And you want to recoat this product within four to six hours of applying. The final product is a solvent-based product. This is a two-part poly polyurea. It's called polyastic. It has a one-to-one -one mix design, 65% solids. This does have an odor, but is considered a zero VOC uh, product based on the formulation. This product gets mixed one-to-one. -one. We have two different sizes. We have a two-gallon kit. And then we also have a two-quart kit for smaller projects. So we're going to mix these two together, and then we roll this product on. We roll it on with uh, uh, microfiber, high-quality microfiber rollers, and we want to mix this up and make sure that we get this product used up within 20 to 30 minutes of mixing time. So if we look at the features, the polyastic, two-component with a one-to-one -one mix design, it's a solvent-based product, so it does have an odor, 65% solids, zero VOC sealer. We're going to mix it, we're going to apply this product at a rate of 200 to 400 square feet per gallon, and it's going to give us a very high gloss when we're done. On all of these sealers, two coats of, of sealer are recommended for maximum protection. Uh, in the case of the deck epoxy, two, gal two coats of the deck epoxy will yield a high gloss. Two coats of the Euromax, again, is going to yield a, uh, a matte finish. Two coats of the polyastic is going to yield a high gloss. All of these sealers are, are designed for use in commercial applications. They, they enhance the color of whatever it is that we're applying it to. Uh, acid stain jobs, water-based stains, overlays, um, interior stamp concrete applications. These products are very good. They're all designed to comply with FDA guidelines for food service preparation. Uh, so they're going to be easy to clean and non-porous. So it's very important uh, to make sure that we don't have any moisture coming through the floor in these situations. Surface preparation is going to be very important with all of these products. So make sure you read our technical information sheet online at brickform.com. Okay, so here we've got our deck epoxy application. We've applied one coat. It's tack free, we're within our recoat window. We've mixed up some more deck epoxy, so now we're going to put on our second coat so that we can achieve a really nice high sheen 
and durable finish on our uh, stampable overlay job. Now this product we're going to put on thin, very, very thin. It's going to white up a little bit and then it's going to clear out. It will have some color enhancement. Just like the, uh, the water-based epoxy did, the deco epoxy did. Real important, again, uh, roller pad selection. The microfiber allows us to uh, roll out a lot nicer than, than traditional nap rollers. Because this can be uh, pretty fussy as far as the um, application of the product. And we want to make sure we've got a good, high quality um, microfiber roller cover. And back roll it and then forward roll it just like I'm doing here. That will help get the, um, the roller marks out of the slab. Now again, this is, this is our matte finish. We're going, this is going to dry and it's going to dry to a matte finish. So when, we're, when this is all done, there will be little to no sheen on this slab. But that's the way, you know, you saw how I was just kind of massaging those roller marks out. Um, and, and that's what you got to do. You got to take this and back roll it and then forward roll that, that uh, um, uh, the roller mark right out of the slab to make sure that you don't end up with a roller mark that you can see once it clears out. Again, I'm using a, a microfiber roller cover. This is really nice and smooth. Um, I only want to mix up as much as I can put down in a 20-minute period, maybe 30-minute max. Okay? Really important to remember, this stuff, when it starts to cook, you're going to have trouble with roller marks and the product caking up and being hard to spread out. Um, but if I'm in the initial uh, time frame, I can put this down and uh, it lays down real nice and smooth. Um, it's not a high build sealer, so again, we don't want to try to fill this thing up and make it baby butt smooth. We're rolling this out and thinning it out. I want to get, uh, you know, about uh, 350 to four, uh, 400 square feet out of a, out of a two gallon kit. So again, we're just going to roll this on nice and thin. You'll see the color enhancement that you get. We roll it out again nice and thin. Two coats will give a water clear finish, super high gloss. But you definitely, depending on how porous the slab is, you definitely have to use two coats to get to that uh, super high gloss finish. People are doing countertops, are they doing two coats also on countertops? Typically, to get a, to get a real high, high sheen on it. How long before you can put the second coat on it? You want to look at recoating within two to four hours. And if you go over eight hours, you're saying and using the sanding screen. Because this will reject itself and it'll just peel off in a nice sheet. And this is definitely something that, you know, if you've got to stop, you want to stop at a control joint. You know, if you have to come back the next day, definitely stop at a control joint so that you don't end up with overlap marks. Uh, where you can have problems with sealer adhesion. And once I get this down, two coats of this, uh, follow it up with um, the uh, DuraWax, and you will not have to reseal this product. Good hard shell finish, will last a long, long time. I use it on my own personal countertops. It's been down for about two and a half years now, and it works great.
put that on the garage floor, how well does that hold up to salt? Okay. And keep them right up on top. Yeah. I would I would definitely use it on my own garage floor. So it's fairly scratch resistant then? I mean it it will start to dull and scratch a little bit over time depending on what type of abuse is on it happening to it. But uh, but yeah, it's pretty scratch resistant material. Preparation is key to this, so, you know, just like we've been talking about surface prep, surface prep, surface prep. You know, it's really, really, really important to get a good profile or else these products won't stick. I just got back from Fargo, North Dakota a couple weeks ago. They went in, they polished the floor, polished it, put our water-based stain down, and then put the deck epoxy down over the top of it. Moved their forklifts in, it was a forklift showroom, Park the forklifts on it for a few days. As soon as they moved those forklifts, it peeled it right off. And then it just started peeling off in sheets. And I got up there and it was it was smooth. It was as smooth as this board right here. And so there was nothing for that deck epoxy to bite to. And actually nothing for the uh, for the uh, stain to soak into. So it was it was a bad situation for them. So they got to take it all off, scratch up the floor, restain it, redo the deck epoxy. CSP one, two. CSP one or two, yeah. We want this open and porous and, and really get some teeth in there. Okay. 